At Progressive Field in Cleveland, Ohio, the New York Mets play the Cleveland Indians. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by the Better Network, Verizon. Better matters. By StubHub, looking for great seats, head to StubHub, the official ticket marketplace of the New York Mets. By Tri Honda, hurry to your local Tri Honda dealer for great deals on 2016 models. By Bob's Discount Furniture, shop in store or online at mybobs.com. And by Time Warner Cable, enjoy all the things you love better with Time Warner Cable. Call 1 855 WANT TWC today. Well, it's a beautiful day in Cleveland, Ohio, and a big day for the city of Cleveland because, well, it's a two sport town today, and the way the arenas are configured, well, they're right next door to each other. So later today, it's LeBron and the Cavs. But first, the main event, the Mets and the Indians. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Cleveland. I'm Gary Cohen. Keith Hernandez joins me in just a moment as the Mets wrap up their three-game interleague series against the Indians. It's been a high-scoring affair so far. Mets came in on Friday night struggling to score runs. Bartolo Colon took the mound back in his old haunts where he began his career in Cleveland, and he tied Pedro Martinez with his 219th win, and the Mets... All of a sudden found their power in the fifth inning. Alejandro Diaz and Yuenis Cespedes and Neil Walker all going deep in quick succession. The Mets built themselves a big lead and then hung on with the tying and winning runs on base in the ninth inning. Jerry Reese Familia got the final out for the save and the Mets beat the Indians 6-5. to five. Yesterday, Matt Harvey took them out in search of his first win of the year and he came out guns blazing. He struck out the side in the first inning, and Matt proceeded to retire the first 13 Indians to face him. However, things got dicey in the fifth inning, and the Indians then put nine of the next 13 men on base and scored five runs, and Harvey's day was ruined yet again. Mets were down 7-1 in this game, fought their way back to 7-5. But with the tying run at bat, David Wright hit the ground ball to end the game, and the Indians had a 7-5 win to even up the series. So it's been a big offensive series so far. Well, it has been. And remember, the Mets started the season the first eight games, last in run scored, only scored 20 runs. Well, they've scored 11 here in the first two games. And as Gary showed you in the highlights there, the seven home runs in this series, that's the positive end there. Outside of Noah Syndergaard on the pitching side, the pitching has been a little bit down right now. They need to pick it up. But all in all, I think the positive coming uh, coming into this final rubber match here, a game in, in Cleveland, is the offense has taken off. And on the pitching front, it's Steven Matz going to the mound for his second start of the year. The first one could not have gone much worse. Well, he had a tough one. I mean, he got rocked. And I think a lot of it had to do with him missing a start, getting set back with all the bad inclement weather. He's uh, out here now on regular rest. Hopefully he can get his rhythm and win a ball game here. And for the Indians, the former Cy Young Award winner Corey Kluber looking for his first win of the year. Well, he's he lost a tough one his last time out, a two-run home run. He lost 3-1 to one in Tampa, former Cy Young Young Award winner two years ago. Lost 16 games last year. Big curveball, one of the best pitchers in the American League. So it's the Mets and the Indians wrapping up their series on another sunny day in Cleveland. Mets and Indians, all the action coming your way on SNY.
Free shirt Friday of 2016 on April 29th when the Mets face off against the Giants at 7:10 p.m. All fans in attendance will receive a 2015 National League Champs T-shirt, courtesy of 1-800-Flowers.com. For tickets, visit Mets.com/Free Shirt Fridays. Closed captioning for Mets baseball brought to you by Sideline. Bob Feller showing how it's done. Steven Matz and Corey Kluber will try and imitate him. First pitch, Mets and Indians coming right up. Cleveland, Corey Kluber getting ready to make his third start of the year for the tribe. Nice looking uniform, don't you think, Gary? Yeah, they wore this alternate yesterday. I like it a lot. Very clean. I love it. Here's your Geico Mets starting lineup for this afternoon. David Wright getting a scheduled day also as Dribble Cabrera, who's been swinging the bat well, moves up to the two hole. Michael Conforto stays third. Travis Darno's elbow is going to keep him out of action today and maybe tomorrow after being hit by a pitch yesterday, but could play in an emergency. Kevin Plowecki will get the start behind the plate this afternoon. And there's today's starting pitcher, Corey Kluber, 30 years old, two years removed from American League Cy Young. Led the league last year in losses at 16. A big strikeout guy, though, struck out 245 batters. And the Indians defense brought to you by Coors Light. Ramirez gets a start out in left field today. Nick Queen gets a day off. On the infield, the old reliable Juan Uribe, a big part of the Mets last year in their run to the division title and the National League crown, and Jan Gomes behind the plate. Curtis Granderson will lead things off. Curtis began yesterday's game with a home run. Last year hit seven leadoff home runs, which was a Mets club record. And two extra base hits yesterday as he tries to get his April jump started. And Kluber's first pitch of the afternoon is a fastball in for a strike. Curtis starting to swing the bat a little bit better here in this series. Kluber now 30 years old. When he won the Cy Young two years ago, 18 and 9, 2.44. 
his ERA was about a run higher last year when he went 9 and 16 but interestingly his walks and hits per innings pitch his whip was actually lower last year than it was the year he won the Cy Young. Of course the wins and losses often dependent on run support and it's been going down for Kluber. Actually the year before he won the Cy Young he had his best run support. And then last year it went down the tank. Yes. Two and two to Granderson. He'll rely on a good sinking fastball, a cutter, and a curveball. He's got a great curveball. It was uh, it was when he decided to ditch his four seamer and go more with his sinking fastball in 2013 that his career began to turn around. Well, he's had the third most 10 strikeout games since 2014. Anytime you're striking out double digits, then even though in today's strikeout world of baseball, uh, it's still 10 strikeouts is 10 strikeouts. It means a lot. 245 strikeouts last year in 222 innings. Three and two on Granderson leading off, and Curtis lays off and draws the leadoff walk. Luber does not walk many. Last year, fewer than two walks per nine innings. Here's your umpiring crew for today. Bob Davidson, the veteran, has the plate. Lance Barrett at first. The crew chief, Dale Scott, at second. Dan Iasonia is at third. So the Mets have a leadoff base runner. And now as Drupal Cabrera, the former Indian. Two for six in this series. Moved up to the two hole with David Wright getting the day off today. And Cabrera hitting coming in 294 has been very steady and solid both offensively and defensively for the Mets. There's that, your. That's that first pitch sinker. That's what you were talking about here the sink. Uber came out of the same college that produced Jacob deGrom. He went to Stetson and in fact. Two years ago, Stetson was flush with honors when Kluber won the Cy Young in the American League and DeGrom won the Rookie of the Year in the National League. By the way, um, the news on Jacob's infant son, Jackson, is positive today. Terry Collins said he spoke with Jacob last night and that Jackson is doing better. So that is uh, certainly a relief to Jacob and his wife, Stacy, as they. Nurse the baby through some difficult times. Change up from Kluber gets him ahead on Cabrera 0 and 2. Jacob is uh, he threw a bullpen session down in Florida today and he'll do that again on Tuesday and the Mets hope that they can get him back in the rotation when they get to Atlanta next weekend. Well I tell you what the Mets need a strong performance the bullpen in particular needs a strong performance and a deep performance from Mats today. Granderson at first and nobody out just getting started here in Cleveland. And Cabrera finds the hole on the right side. Granderson had to hold up to avoid getting hit so he'll pull on at second and the Mets have the first two men on against Corey Kluber. Kluber hasn't gone to his breaking ball yet. Fastball down sinker nice hitting that hole you can see Granderson had to do a little jump rope here. Dodgeball. They outlawed dodgeball. What a shame. All we have to do is watch the Ocho. How can you outlaw <laughs> dodgeball? It was fun. Actually, I think there is actually a professional dodgeball. Really? I think there is. As, as much as you know, they may have parodied it, parodied it in the movie. Here's Michael Conforto with two men on. Third straight game in the three hole this entire series in the three position and he's going to be in there for a bit just watching his back shoulder gear a little bit worried he's dropping that back shoulder a little bit getting under the ball I want to see him start focusing on the top half of that ball hitting line drives he only hit one line drive yesterday a bullet into the right field corner for a double yes, he did after he homered in his first at bat Friday night. So he's got a couple of extra base hit in this hits in this series. The Mets offense is broken out in the power department seven home runs in the first two games in this series after just two home runs in the Mets first eight games of the year. That's hoping to take advantage of Kluber early on two and oh the count and Conforto fouls off the fastball. Kluber has had a tendency to get off to slow starts 
And that includes his Cy Young year. So if you want to get him, get him early in the season and maybe today early in the game. 53 degrees at game time. It's been sunny and in the 50s all three days in this series. Not much of a breeze today. What there is is blowing in again from right center field. Wilbur having trouble locating his fastball now behind three and one with the Uena Cespedes waiting on deck. Good pitch to hit. Cespedes has had himself a terrific series despite the big bruise on his leg. Well, he hit a bomb yesterday. There was no, no doubter into the left field bleachers. 3 1 coming to Conforto. And he smacks one toward the gap in right center field. Headed toward the wall, and it's off the fence on the fly. Granderson is in. Cabrera stops at third. Conforto slides in safely with a run scoring double. And three batters into the game. The Mets have a 1 0 lead. There's your line drive, Gary. Three and one. Pitcher in a hole there. Struggling. Hasn't got anybody out. Felt high out over the plate. Beautifully done. Off the wall. Halfway up. I'll tell you one thing. There's the fastball. There's the contact. Beautiful swing Conforto has. Didn't try to do too much with it. So the Mets have scored in the first inning in all three games in this series. Conforto homered in the first inning Friday night. Granderson homered in the first inning yesterday. And now Conforto gets the Mets on the board early with a chance for more. And Mickey Calloway, the Indians pitching coach, is out visiting Corey Kluber, who has been shaky in the early going. Well, one thing the Indians have done in the outfield as far they are very solid in this series with their relay throws in. They have thrown out two Met runners at home plate in this series already, but they got good fundamentals. They don't miss their cutoff men. By the way, that's the first run the Mets have scored in this series, not on a home run. Here's Cespedes, who's hit two homers in this series and driven in five. He's got two in scoring position and most of the infield is back. And the cutter in for a strike from Kluber. Napoli, the first baseman, is in. Everybody else playing for the out at first with Cabrera at third and Conforto at second. So a chance for Cespedes to do some damage here with Duda on deck. Good cut. He's got a swing back. The Mets offense has found its mojo over these two days in Cleveland. Yep. All that hullabaloo back there in those first eight games. All that shouting and screaming. <laughs> the sky's falling. The guy's got to take a chill pill. Let's go. And the Mets are going to another good offensive park tomorrow when they start their series in Philadelphia. And mm. the breaking ball just missed. First curveball Kluber's thrown. And he thought he had it. I thought he did too. Mm. That's a strike. One and two to Cespedes. And he hits that curveball in the air, a foul ball. Gomes coming back for the call. And he can't oh. catch it. Wow. Gomes had trouble locating it at first, and the first baseman, Napoli, was playing so far off the line he wasn't going to get there. Uh, it was the catcher's ball, and no sun's in effect here. It shouldn't have been a sun. The sun is more behind home plate. He just botched it. And they will charge an error on Gomes for prolonging the time at bat. That is a rare gift. So that makes Kluber's work that much more difficult. Through two good curveballs in a row and got Cespedes to pop up the second one. And Cespedes goes down swinging on a cutter in the dirt. And that's the first out. Hard curve in the dirt, hard to lay off. When you got a biting hook like that that has such down break. So Kluber gets his first out via the strikeout. And he'll take on Lucas Duda with two in scoring position, and the infield will stay back. And Lucas has been uh, struggling. He's been off to a tough start. 
one for nine in this series. They do not put on the full shift against him with runners at second and third. And he rips one into right field for a base hit. And that should score two. Cabrera is in. Conforto right behind him. A big two run single for Lucas Duda. And the Mets have posted three against Corey Kluber in the first inning. Well, not wasting any time. I tell you what, they got up early, had their coffee and the room service. They're ready to hit. First ball pit, pitch right here. First ball fastball down. Bled out over the middle. It's the first two runs that Duda has driven in since the opening series, I believe. Here, his fourth and fifth runs batted into the year. So the Mets off to a fast start with three runs home, and a hot hitter Neil Walker coming up. Walker is homered in each of the first two games of this series. He homered right-handed on Friday night. He homered left-handed his last time up yesterday. And Kluber misses away for ball one. So normally these day games today there's a little bit of sleepwalking going on but not not this one. Particularly when you're facing a front line starter which the Mets are this afternoon. It's funny how that goes right the Mets face the four and five starters for the Indians the first two games of the series. And having a big first inning against Kluber is one of the big three for the Indians along with Daniel Salazar and Carlos Carrasco whom the Mets missed. Due to add first and one out. And Walker takes a strike. Well, each of the last two years Neil Walker's had more right home runs than any National League second baseman and he's tied for that lead right now. Uh, he had 23 two years ago was his career high wasn't it. And then he had 16 last year. The only Met second baseman to lead the National League in home runs. Was Ron Hunt with 10 back in 63. And. Jeff Kent who didn't blossom till he found his way to. San Francisco had 14 in 94 which was a strike short year. Remember Jeff came here first he played in Cleveland right. before he went to San Francisco. Came with the outfielder what was his uh, the David Cohn trade wasn't it. Uh, Ryan Thompson Ryan, Ryan Thompson right. It was From a bust. Toronto to the Mets right it was a bust. Walker strikes out on the off speed pitch from Kluber. And that's his second strikeout. Well, he's got to throw his breaking ball more here. And here is a little wrinkle, as we used to call it. A drop. I like the wrinkle. <laughs> I always like that term. It's a dry cleaner's term. <laughs> <laughs> so two away. Dude is still at first. And here's Wilmer Flores getting the start at third base today. Wilmer one for ten to start the season. And he pops one up. Rebe right along the line. Plucks it for the out. And that retires the side. But the Mets off to a fast start. Get three runs home against Corey Kluber and hand Steven Matz an early lead.
is the Indians starting lineup this afternoon. Rajay Davis has started in all three outfield positions in this series. Jason Kipnis has had a terrific series, four for nine with three doubles. Former Met Juan Uribe, four for six in the series. And Stephen Matz, the local Long Island kid, suffered his first defeat of his young major league career. Four and one career total. So far, his second start of the season, the first one is one to grab it in your hands, crumple it up, throw it in the garbage. How easy is that to do? We'll find out. Rajay Davis leads off and Matt's misses way up high for ball one. Matt's pitched a, an effective first inning in that first start against Miami. But then back to back walks put him in trouble in the second and he just couldn't stop the bleeding. Giancarlo Stanton eventually knocked him out of the game with a home run. At that point seven runs had come home. There you go get that ball down first two fastballs up and out of the strike zone. Starts focusing on the knees. Two one to Davis. Popped up. Walker shading his eyes as he goes out. Granderson comes in. He sees it well. And that's the first out. And we'll take a look at the Lexus Mets defense. Diaza getting another start here with a DH. Had a big night the first night. On the infield, Flores now is the second player in Major League Baseball to play all four positions. Of the infield at third base gets a start. Pilecki behind the plate, giving Darno a little spell. Got really hit pretty hard on that forearm yesterday, elbow forearm area. That's so far this year. First, second to play all four. Right, right, this year. Right, right. And Andres Blanco of the Phillies is the other. Here's Jason Kipnis. Kipnis four for nine with three doubles in the series. The uh, the Indians are playing their 10th game of the year and unusually this is the sixth left hand starter they have faced. I mean, what are the odds of that with the dearth of left hand pitching in the majors to face a lefty six out of 10 games. So Kipnis is seeing a ton of lefties early and he's just four for 18 against left handers. And the nice. good ball by Matt strikes out Kipnis for the second out. That's a pitch that we didn't see much from Matz. We saw more sliders in his first start, but he's got a really good curveball. He's got a great curveball. You can see the tumbling of the ball. A little uh, one o'clock to seven curveball right there on your dial. And don't change the dial, folks. Stay tuned. Here's Francisco Lindor. The switch hitter has done better as a right hand batter so far this year, seven for 17. Just one for eight in this series. Kind of giving away that change up, Gary. Slows that motion down. It's got to be careful with that. That's Western Union. And that's what you guys were talking about during his start on Monday. That with most of his off speed pitches, he was tipping them with the speed of his delivery. That's something as a hitter myself over. Most of my first half of my life. Curveball strikes out Lindor, so back to back strikeouts with the curve for Mats. And after being handed a three run lead, he throws up a quick zero in the bottom of the first.
Second inning, three nothing New York. Alejandro Diaz leads off against Corey Kluber. Diaz a three for eight in this series with a double and a home run. Kevin Ploiecki on deck, then Curtis Granderson for the Mets in the second. After the Mets put up a three spot in the first, Michael Conforto a run scoring double. Lucas Duda brought home two with a single. Well, Kluber got hurt, burned with his fastball in the first inning. Give up three runs. Let's see if he's, he's going to have to mix it up. Deaza takes one foul down the left side. Very interesting his setup, Gary, from the windup. Very much like Syndergaard mm. with that look at, the, look at the leg right behind in front. Usually that the just like Syndergaard and hardly any step back like Syndergaard. Deaza pops one into shallow left center. Ramirez coming on. And that's the first out of the inning. Well there you go here and that's pointing towards the third and just a little not even can you call that a step back well, like a tiptoe it's like a ballet dance very interesting I mean, it doesn't seem like you can get a lot of drive off your back leg well but it's a, it's a simplistic wind up he's not as big as Syndergaard he's still big he's 6'4 215. Well, that, that's plenty big yeah he's able to generate enough power out of that simple wind up. Kevin Ploiecki getting the start today after Travis Darno got drilled in the elbow and had to come out of the game yesterday. Ploiecki will probably play tomorrow as well in Philly. Mets are not calling up any kind of backup because Darno feels he can play if there's an emergency. And the Mets have plenty of emergency catchers on the roster because Neil Walker was a minor league catcher. Oh nice curve right there. That's his big strikeout pitch. That's why he had 245 strikeouts last year. Look at this bite. Not a strike. Got to make those curveballers get it up. On the outside corner. Dots the fastball for his third strikeout. Two away. Well, last year, 245 strikeouts with a winning percentage of 360. Only two other pitchers in history had those that many strikeouts with that low winning percentage. One before the uh, 20th century began. And Nolan Ryan, who famously went 8 and 16 in 1987. He might have led the league in ERA that year, didn't Ryan? I was so close to it. 87. He was eight and 16 with 270 strikeouts. The other gentleman was back in 1884, Larry McKinn. He went 18 and 41. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. Granderson out to deep left center, shading his eyes as Davis, and he can't find it, and it bounces against the wall. Granderson heading for third, and he's in standing with a triple. Rajay Davis had trouble finding that ball in left center field, and it landed beyond his reach. And he's got shades on, and he wasn't even, he was 10 feet from that ball when it bounced. And this is a definite sun field. Look at his shadow. And he had no chance on that and he's doing everything he can do and he just didn't get it done never happened to me freebies <laughs> well, the first triple of the year for Granderson and the Mets hope to cash in the break with as dribble Cabrera at the plate Cabrera had a two strike base hit his first time up to help fuel that three run inning. By the way, 1987, Nolan Ryan did lead the league in ERA, 2.76, despite that one lost record, and led the league in strikeouts. And in an era where one lost record was more heavily regarded, finished fifth in the Cy Young balloting that year, despite going 8 and 16. It's hard to win a Cy Young when you have a record like that. But, you know, back in those days when one lost records were more heavily regarded, right, very unusual to finish that high. Usually the Cy Young Award winners won 20 games. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of old pitchers of the older generations that were happy they pitched in their time. I don't think they want to 
relinquish a start in the sixth, seventh inning. Beautiful bunt by Cabrera. Kluber with the bare hand play, and he throws it away. A run is in. Cabrera goes to second. A surprise bunt with two out by Cabrera, and he couldn't have laid it down any better. He'll get credit for a base hit. Kluber throws it away for an error, and the Mets lead it 4 0. Well, nice heads up play by Cabrera. If you can get it done, he put a beautiful bunt down the line. If you'll notice on the throw from Kluber, watch his feet come out from under him. But really, a beautiful bunt right down the line. I think caught everybody by surprise. Very seldom do you see a two, two out drag button. Now watch, he lost a little bit of his footing there. He might have been better off to maybe trying to make the play at home on Keith, Granderson. Keith, the more we watch us dribble Cabrera, the more you have to be impressed with just the way he senses the game. He doesn't get rushed. He understands situations. He sees where opportunities are. Yep. It's a small sample over the first three weeks of the season, but he's been very impressive. There's Michael Conforto taking one blowing in for ball one. Well, here's the play and watch Granderson coming in. Well, the third baseman Uribe playing so far back. He didn't even have a play at Granderson. Granderson got such a great jump on the bunt. And remember, Granderson was probably caught by surprise. Mm -hmm. So good heads up by Grandy. Conforto pulls one off the bag and down the line, and that'll bring in another run. Cabrera's into score, Conforto into second with his second double and his second RBI of the day, and the Mets are putting it to Corey Clover. They've got a 5 0 lead. Well, Met fans, on this replay, go say hello to your new third hitter for the next hopefully 15 years. Right down the line. There he is right there. Look at that. He got a little break there. The ball hit the bag. Otherwise, I think Napoli would I might have had a chance to make the play. So the Mets got a break when Rajay Davis lost Granderson's triple in the sun and they've cashed in two runs. And a chance for more with Cespedes at the plate. Cespedes struck out his first time up. Kluber misses away. By the way, Corey Kluber's velocity down. Two years ago, he was over 93 with his average fastball. Last year, 92.8. He's down in the 91 range most of the time here. Cespedes just got under that ball. Let's see if Davis can find this one in the sunshine. Oh, my goodness. He's struggling and it lands wow. again. Conforto scores. Cespin is at second. Six nothing. New York. Rajay Davis having all sorts of trouble with Mother Nature. It's getting to the point where I think you've got to take him out of center field if that's going to be that much of an issue for him. He is hearing it from the fans here. Well, this one was just a routine fly ball. I mean, you are a major league player and. Got to make those plays. Now Davis is a veteran. He's been around. He's 35 years old. He's played a lot of center field in his career in a lot of different ballparks. And for whatever reason, the sun today in Cleveland has proved to be a mighty enemy. Wow, that is. Uh, That's with three gift runs here in the second because of that. Can't find a hole deep enough. Ross Detweiler with an early call in the Indians bullpen. Kluber has given up six runs and seven hits. Not all of it his fault. That's a two out and nobody on here in the second, but two sun aided extra base hits have fueled another rally. And the backdoor breaking ball to Duda for a strike. Duda cashed two runs with a base hit his first time up. Gary, you know, you mentioned how Kluber's velocity has dropped. I think it's a direct correlation to pitchers not throwing enough today. I mean, just getting yanked early. I think they don't, they can't sustain. And yet, this is a guy who has thrown 235, 222 innings the last couple of years. Notice 
about Kluber today. He usually throws a lot of cutters. He's not done that early in this game. Well, that's the, he's wearing the black hat right now. For if you're an Indian fan, two muff fly balls. This inning should have been long over. No runs. And Duda takes strike three called. Now the inning comes to an end, but the Mets able to cash three runs. Got a feel for Rajay Davis. The sun overwhelmed him. Scoring three runs in the second inning. Rajay Davis losing two balls in the sun. And that I'm sure was the main topic of conversation once he got in the dugout. Well, what do you say to your starting pitcher? God, I'm sorry. Marlon Bird in there giving him some advice. Mike Napoli leading off against Steven Matz in the home second. So Matz now with a plethora of runs to work with. Gives him a chance just to let it. Throw the fastball, get it, get your rhythm. Matz has had hasn't had a lot of innings pitched. <coughs> and there's that change up again, and I do not like that call. Early in the game, he also slowed his motion down again. Let him throw fastball, curveball. Get him into his rhythm. He needs a lot of innings today. There's the fastball in 94. Well, he's had a good curveball early in this game. Got strikeouts of Kipnis and Lindor in the first inning on the curve. And now he's two and two on Napoli. Carlos Santana on deck. Then Jan Gomes for Cleveland in the second. And Napoli will fight that one off. All running it on his hands. Two two coming and Napoli yeah. takes strike three call fastball got him looking three strikeouts in the first four hitters for Steven Matz. Keep pouring that fastball let this kid find his rhythm. By the way this is only the second time Kevin Ploiecki has ever caught Matz in the big leagues. He caught the first start Steven made coming off the disabled list last September. Johnny Manel actually caught Matz's first two major league starts, and Travis Darno had caught all the other ones, other than that one game last September.
Carlos Santana one for five in the series has also drawn four walks. He stole a base yesterday. And Rajay Davis is still trying to figure it all out. Rounded down to Duda, fumbles it, and has time to make the play on Santana for the second out. I mean, are there different kinds of sunglasses that guys can try to try and mitigate situations like that? I've always, Gary, I, we just had the flip downs, and there were different shades. Some were darker, medium, and light. I didn't like the darker shade. It was too dark, and the lighter shade, forget it. And they get, start getting watering eyes looking into that sun. The medium I found most effective for me. And uh, you know Davis wears the wraparounds and. I. I know just from. The limited amount of experience that, that I had as a kid wearing flip downs that they were much more effective than wearing sunglasses all the time. I agree. As far as. You know darkening. Your eyes when you need to when you have to look up at the exactly because then you're you're used to the light. And then when you flip them down it really. Puts a din over it and, and the glare. Decreases. Ripped into center field a base hit for Jan Gomes. The first Indians base runner of the day. So Matson retired the first five a two out single for Gomes. It's all right, six run lead. They're getting paid for a living too, you know, they're paid to hit. Can't go out there and throw a no no every time. One time. In 8,000 some games. <laughs> Here's Marlon Bird. Two for five in this series. And he takes up and away from that. Speaking of which, I hear that Johan Santana is still trying to make a comeback. It's hard to give up the ghost. You love the game. It's hard to to get out of uniform. You know, if you think you can still play, and it's it, it's tough to come to the realization. And we all do. Everybody will when you can't play anymore. You got to give it up. I'm not saying he shan't. He, that he that it's Johan's. Time yet, but everybody have been. There's no senior league in baseball, just you like there's no crying in baseball. There was once a senior league in baseball. Remember that? Yes, they I had do. the senior league down yep. in Florida. Yeah, it didn't work. You never attempted to play. No, 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 no. no. At the back, that's falls behind a bird three and oh. I wouldn't have played anyway if I was healthy. For me, it's only golf and tennis. It's nice to see McEnroe still playing, you know. Don't forget bocce. There's a strike, three and one. Hey, guys play bocce into their 90s. Bocce ball. Bocce. The old, the old, yeah. yeah, my grandfather used yeah. to. My Spanish grandfather well, played bocce ball on weekends in San Francisco during the Depression. There's a strike, three and two. Well, bocce is big in New York. I mean, you get some of the old neighborhoods on a Sunday. It's a perfect day for rolling a little bocce. I'd rather play shuffleboard. Oh, well, there you go. Another another game you can play well into your dotage. <laughs> Got Jones, Gomes will run, and the 3 2 is outside the bird, and the Indians have two men on. Just missed with that fastball. I like that. Just on the knees, outside, just a hair. So a two out single and a walk. And now Wanda Rebe, who's had a really good series against the team that declined to re sign him. Rebay four for six in this series. Follow Mets Baseball live with the MLB.com at Bat app. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone and tablet. off the outside corner much better performance from Matt's today throwing hard he's got a great arm 
throwing strikes. Well, you know how much the last five days have eaten at him after that four short debut on Monday. Jams a rebate. It's a long five days in between starts when you get I can't get out of the second inning. And he also knows how much pressure he put on the rest of the pitching staff by getting knocked out early. It really knocked the Mets bullpen into a tizzy for the rest of the week. Also, he himself, uh, Stephen, you know, all the high, highly touted starting rotation and to have such a horrific opening season start. It happens to all of them. For the one, best of them. One two coming. The curve ball bounced toward the hole. Flores bobbles, oh. grabs, and makes the play to end the inning. And that came up nicely for Flores after it bounced off his glove right into his bare hand. And that gets Matts through the second. Six nothing New York. to put up a pair of threes to start the afternoon and Neil Walker will lead off the third. Inter Walker, Walker struck out his first time up. Interesting what uh, Terry Collins said in his uh, pregame meeting with us in, the, in his office. Scorched on the ground right to Kipnis one pitch and one out. And I'll be brief since he first pitch swinging four to three on your scorecard. He told Terry that he Clint Hurdle would never let him hit start him against a tough right hander a left hander and would not would pinch hit for him a lot he goes Terry is giving him the opportunity and he said he feels as a result a confidence boost coming from your manager and I feel great at the plate right handed it's also made a little mechanical adjustment right handed which seems to have paid off and Walker Five for nine as a right hand batter so far this year, including his first home run batting right handed in two seasons. That's that cutter from Kluber. One and one to Flores. Wilmer popped up his first time up, getting his third start of the year. He looked really good playing first base the other day. Keith. Sure I did. Caught that. I ran up to him. I saw the three six. Was it a three six three double play? Uh huh. I went up to Wilmer and I said, Wilmer, first base is easy, isn't it? <laughs> he goes, no. Pop foul, that'll come back out of play. By the way, the pop foul that Jan Gomes failed to catch during the Cespedes bat in the first inning, they've now taken away the error, which I guess was the result of Rajay Davis missing the two fly balls. They figured yeah, that maybe the sun was a factor for Gomes as well although it didn't appear to be serious home book. Yeah that's what that is probably got a call from the dugout. 
complaining. No, I never complain. Oh, I never, never would get on the phone and call up to the press booth. I had a few guys that did that in my day. Curveball from Kluber for his fifth strikeout as he gets Flores. Well, you know the Bobby Bonilla story, right? Uh, yes, I kind of remember. There's a nice curve right here. You're in a great spot. That's his strikeout pitch. That's for enduring a seven run first inning against the Cubs at, at Shea Stadium. And in the course of the inning, Bonilla was charged with an error. And uh, when he got back to the dugout, before the Mets came to bat in the bottom of the first, having already given up seven runs, he called the press box to complain about the error call. That's for something, you know, you, the scorekeeper was always uh, Red Foley, who I liked very much. Uh, for when I was with the Mets, and you just needle them when they come. Red would always come in the clubhouse with that cigar. That would be banned today. Yes, it would. And uh, you would just needle them. I, I would always needle them about. Uh, you know, he wouldn't. He, he didn't believe in a home book or giving you a hit. So I'd go, Red, come on, I, I'm not going to get those hits on the road because I don't know such thing as a home book case. Hey, if, if I know Red. <laughs> He gave as good as he got. <laughs> He's not going to take your stuff. No, no. <laughs> we wound up having fun and laughing and, and having fun with it. I liked him. He was a good guy. Mm -hmm. They also fly to left his first time up. And he goes down swinging on the curveball from Kluber. And that was a wipeout pitch to end the inning. Six strikeouts for Kluber, but the Mets have a 6 0 lead. Nothing. Corey Kluber with six strikeouts. This was the last one with his great curveball. Down and in, hard layoff, not a strike. There's the grips there, and you can see a lot more ball exposed. Uh, Mats is on the left, of course, the blue, and the red, of course, is Kluber. But Kluber, a lot more ball showing, more on the fingertips, and that maybe has a lot to do with maybe Mats is you know is taller, he's six four, he's got bigger hands, longer fingers. Matt's had a good curveball early in this game, as has Kluber. And the Mets have the upper hand because they were able to get to Kluber's fastball. Jose Ramirez leading off in the home third, batting ninth and playing left field. There's the fastball from Matt's for a strike, and it's 0 2. Ramirez, 2 for 7 in this series. Well, Matt's has already gone deeper into this game than he went in his first start. And there's another curveball and a nice easy hop for Cabrera. Throws out Ramirez one away. 
Let's check in with Steve Gelbs. His report today is brought to you by Memorial Sloan Kettering. Steve? Gary, here at Progressive Field, the Indians do a really nice job recognizing their extensive 100-plus year history. Even the not-so-pleasant memories, like the one back in 1920, Ray Chapman of the Indians was actually the first and only player to ever be killed in an on-field incident. Carl Mays of the New York Yankees hit him in the head with a pitch at the polo grounds and they have a nice plaque memorializing Ray Chapman as Davis pushes this bunt down first and Matt's unable to make the play. So Davis on with the bunt single. But Ray Chapman memorialized here in Heritage Park for what happened to him and, and obviously it's it's a horrible thing that happened but there are a lot of things in the game today that have come out of that incident that you may recognize first of all the spitball was outlawed after that incident Carl Mays was a known spitball pitcher and they thought that could have something to do with the pitch losing control and, and hitting Mays in the head but the other aspect is that you see nowadays all these new baseballs getting thrown onto the field at all times they keep changing things up back in 19 20 that did not happen they used the baseball until they lost it and what often happened in those situations is the ball would get scuffed up discolored and they thought that there was a potential that Chapman did not see the pitch because of the shadows and the discoloration of the ball so that is when they started introducing in baseball the new baseballs that were white which we still see today very interesting story there uh, Steve I was not aware of that I mean Charlie Finley, if you recall, wanted to have yellow baseballs where the horse hide was with the red striped uh, stitches. And everybody said, no, it's white because the hitter's got to be able to read the stitches on the ball. Well, the thing that confuses me is that it took many more decades for any kind of protection to be introduced for hitters. I mean, in those days, there were no batting helmets. Players wore caps to the plate. And it wasn't really until... The 50s, the players started using the inserts, and right. and, and then teams started uh, slowly introducing batting helmets. But you would have thought, after a man was killed by a pitch in a Major League Baseball game, that the next step would have been to introduce some kind of protective gear, and it wasn't for many decades after until they did. And think of all the years that the goalies in hockey play without a mask. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, I couldn't imagine that. Meanwhile, Rajay Davis safe by an eyelash on a play at first base. Nice play by Matts here. Good feed. And he just did beat it. It's tough for Lucas there to stretch when a pitcher's so close to you. Double play ball. Cabrera with the step and fire for the 6 6 3 double play. And that negates the bunt hit. Another good inning for Steven Matts. Three scoreless and a 6 0 Mets lead after three.
Fourth inning, Kevin Pluecki leads off against Corey Kluber. That's with a 6 0 lead. Pluecki, one of the six strikeout victims for Kluber in the first three innings. That's uh, it's no shame in being struck out by Corey Kluber, who last year struck out 18 in a game against the Cardinals. Mm. That's drilled toward the wall in left field, and it's off the fence. Ploiecki is going to have to settle for a single, as Ramirez, who threw out David Wright in a similar play yesterday, gets it back in quickly. Well, that ball was scalded, and all you guys. Wherever you are in the computers, what's the exit velocity on this one? This was a rocket. You got nothing else to do? Bring us the exit velocity. By the way, uh, that's two home runs the Mets would have had with a lower yes. fence in left field. 19 feet high out there. David Wright, of course, was the, first, the other one. It was all the way from the left field corner, all the way almost to dead center field. That ball was ripped. So the Mets had their eighth hit. Sun was not a factor on that one. Granderson hit one up in the sun and left center that Rajay Davis lost for a triple that got a three run, two out rally going in the second. One of two balls that Davis lost in the sun. Anderson went around on the changeup, one and two. The shift on Granderson. That's Dribble Cabrero waiting on deck. Two and two. So if you're going to do that, if I'm hitting and they're going to play this defense on me, they better pitch me in, Garrett. Not out over the plate or away. I, I don't think they'd play this defense against you because you were more of an all field hitter. Agreed. I was a gap to gap hitter. I would have defended me by just playing straight up on the, on the infield and moving the third baseman way off the line, take my hole away from me, and then gap me in the outfield. Three and two with nobody out. Luecki's running. Granderson hits it in the air to left center. <laughs> Ramirez sees it and catches it. And Davis is happy it was the left field. I'm not sure that Davis saw that one. Oh, man. One out and one on. Fourth inning brought to you by the 2017 Audi A4 and your tri state Audi dealers. Here is Cabrera, who's two for two, had a base hit and scored a run in the first, and then the second with a runner at third and two out, laid down a surprise bunt that went for a hit to drive in a run, and scored again. Scrubel Cabrera, who started out his career here in the Indians, played seven years in a Cleveland uniform. In fact, there are only two shortstops who've played more games in this stadium. Then as Drupal Cabrera, he, this is his 373rd game at shortstop in this ballpark. Only Johnny Peralta, who's just a few games ahead of Cabrera, and as Drupal Cabrera's boyhood idol, Omar Vizquel, have played in more games as a shortstop at Progressive Field. And that, in fact, the reason as Drupal wears number 13 is for Omar Vizquel. Omar Vizquel was a one of the fine shortstops in the history of the game. Hall of Famer. I've got to look at his numbers, Gary. My feeling is if Ozzie Smith is a Hall of Famer, which I believe he legitimately earned, then so is Omar Vizquel because they're very similar players. You know what my feeling is? If Pee Wee Reese and Phil Rizzuto are in the Hall of Fame, Vizquel's in the Hall of Fame. Vizquel was just a magician with the glove and became a very good hitter. One of those very powerful Indians teams back in the 90s. And uh, played until he was, what, 44? When he finally retired? There's the good curveball by Kluber to strike out Cabrera. That's seven now for Kluber, two out of the inning. You can see that when he throws that good curveball down and in the left hand hitters, he makes them look bad. Just not a good cut at the ball. 
And it's you know it's just too bad he's given up six runs if you're a Met fan. Hallelujah. He let the horses out of the barn. By the way, just getting back to uh, Cabrera wearing number 13. Uh, 13 became the number of choice for infielders from Venezuela, starting with David Concepcion. He wore number 13, and then everybody who followed Cardo Alfonso wore 13. Um, who was the um, Pirates? Is that uh, what year? Jose Lind. Oh, okay, Jose Lind. Yes. Wore 13. He could jump. He played second base primarily, though, for the Pirates. Right. In our era, our my tenure. But Ozzie Guillen wore 13. Just the, it, it, it is such a popular number because Concepcion started that whole thing when he played for the Big Red Machine I, in the 70. I am superstitious. It's an unlucky number. I wouldn't go 10 yards <laughs> close to it. Michael Conforto has already had a big day, a pair of doubles. He hit the first one off the fence in right center. And the second one, they clipped the first base bag and went down the line. He scored two, he's driven into. So he has had a very comfortable series in the three spot in the batting order. In the air to left field, chasing Ramirez back to the warning track, right at the wall to make the catch. Conforto trying to take one the other way. And Ramirez able to make the play and retire Conforto for the first time today. Still 6 0 New York. Cleveland where the weather has been beautiful it sure has the entire time we've been here and some things you may not know about Cleveland you know you probably know it's the home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame but did you know two Clevelanders invented Superman yep did you know that they haven't won a sports title here since the 64 Browns and this is where the red light began really not no I wouldn't say that 1914 red light for automobiles right okay Oh, I know where you were going. You were going right to Amsterdam. Francisco Lindor takes it inside. Well, Stephen Matz has turned in three solid innings. He's allowed two hits, one walk, struck out three, struck out Lindor his first time up. Also, I believe Lake Erie has, when they have the storms, all the ships that are lost on Lake Erie, of all the, all the Great Lakes, I think Lake Erie is the shallowest of all the Great Lakes.
So the shallow, the shallower the body of water, the waves are, are much bigger in, in, in a storm. Really? Yes. You have to be careful in the Mediterranean too. Is Sir. the shallowness of Lake Erie what caused it to catch on fire in the 1960s? And I don't think I don't think so. I think they corrected that problem. Yes, I, I believe it's a little cleaner now than it was then. Well, you know, Pittsburgh was a real a dirty right. town because of steel mills in the 70s. And look at it now. It is just pristine and a well, nice place to go. No more steel mills. There right. actually is a steel mill here, here in Cleveland still. Whereas they're all shut down now in Pittsburgh. I'm told it wasn't Lake Erie. It was the Cuyahoga River that caught fire. Right, okay, right. It was the river. Adjacent. Three and two to Lindor. Nice. He lines one in the right center for a base hit. Granderson cuts it off deep. Lindor trying for two. And he makes it safely. Second hit of the series for Francisco Lindor. Nice hitting. I always love to see guys use the opposite field gap. Fastball away. Went right with it. Belt high. Got it up. Got it up. Good hitting. Look at that beautiful level swing. Driving right through the ball and into the gap. Nicely cut off by Curtis. Well, Lindor is going to be one of the stars of the American League for years to come. He's 22 years old. Terrific fielder. He's shown more power than they expected. Went over 300 as a rookie last year. Napoli took a call third strike his first time up. <laughs> Stephen Matz in his very brief career last year had remarkable success with men on base not so much his first start of the year. I think you can as Keith said crumple it up and throw it in the garbage. It's nice to see him rebound here even though we're only in the fourth just starting the fourth. Napoli takes a big rip. Boy he doesn't get cheated does he? No. Well 2011 was his big year, big year in Texas. When he was part of that World Series run for the Rangers. Seems like Texas and Toronto is where everybody goes to gain power. He started out his career as a catcher with the Angels. But well, he Texas, then to Boston, and yeah. now in Cleveland. I could by the look at his physique, he looks like a catcher, doesn't he? Remember, he had to battle for playing time there with Jeff Mathis playing for Mike Sosha. Napoli was the offensive catcher, and Mathis was the defensive catcher. And they're both still going. Back to a curveball, misses two and two to Napoli with Carlos Santana on deck. Lewicki sets up inside. And Matt's this is a little low full count. Second straight full count to start the inning for Matt's. He's walked one and struck out three. A lot of three hits. Lindor at second and nobody out. And Napoli pops it up. Should be playable for Duda. And Lucas stays Whoa. with it. And makes the grab. No sunglasses. Yes, and he should have them on. And he's got to have to battle that sun the whole way. What would possess a player on a day like today to take the field without sunglasses? I don't know. Gary, I every, unless it was heavily overcast on a day game, I always wore sunglasses because you never know in the middle of the inning a sun might pop out you know it just might happen but I mean today you know, there's not a cloud to be seen anywhere you would think that it would be a no brainer Carlos Santana takes a strike Santana grounded out to do to his first time up Santana just 
is two for 16 as a right hand batter so far this year. One of three switch hitters in the lineup for the Indians today. John Adams has his big drum going. To the right side, Duda fields this one, and Max covers nicely for the second out as Lindor takes third. Get to City Field for Family Sunday, May 1st. Mets take on the Giants at 110. The first 15,000 fans in attendance will receive a pair of Curtis Granderson baseball socks, courtesy of East Coast Power and Gas. Plus, all kids can run the bases after the game in the Mets Mr. Med Dash, presented by Northwell Health. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash Family Sundays. Do they look like that? Or do they look more like the socks that Keith was wearing during the last homestead? Oh, the Met socks. They're very warm. We don't need them in this boot. This boot is warm. No comment, Gary? I've always loved this ballpark and, and the, our working facilities here. Got a nice big open booth. Got heat above us. I like our us. I like our vantage point right. here. It's Great a beautiful vantage. vantage point. We're close. We're close to the field. Here we are. And not too high up. This is baseball, okay? A good day like this. I think that every weekend, I know we got night games and games are televised. There we are. Um, Hello. It's just in April when the weather's chilly. Play Saturday day games and Sunday. Well, we sort of played a Saturday day game yesterday, four o'clock. Yeah, but I'm. At least it was still light. This is directed towards City Field. We don't have. We have all. We have. Like, I haven't got. There's not one day Saturday uh, game that's scheduled this season. I don't understand that. Strike three called. Gomes is caught looking. That's four strikeouts for Mats, who works around the leadoff double and puts up another zero. The Mets fans have made their way to Cleveland. Yeah, there was there were a lot of Mets fans. I don't know what that sign says, whether it says perennial something nice or perennial something not so nice. Oh, I'm sure it's nice. Well, I'm just glad that we haven't found out because you just never know. You had assessments leads off the fifth and fouls off the cutter. Oh, it says all star. See, you were, ah. you were right. It's a friendly. 
can I tell you? Cespedes is at a fly ball to center field that Rajay Davis lost in the sun. Tell me preferred that one before. He got a double out of it, and the Mets got another run. Two balls that Davis did not catch because of problems with the sun in that second inning. Looks like he's gone to a different pair of sunglasses. And mm. Cespedes is badly fooled on the breaking ball by Kluber. That's eight strikeouts for Corey Kluber. One down in the fifth, and Let's go inside baseball with Steve Gill. Steve? Gary, in a season where we're seeing a couple of the Mets starters struggle to regain their form after pitching so many more innings than they did a year ago than they ever had in the past, the Cubs don't seem to be having that issue with Jake Arrieta, who looks like his Cy Young self. Yesterday, his first start of the season at Wrigley Field, he continued his domination in the friendly confines. Eight shutout innings against the Colorado Rockies, upping his scoreless streak in Wrigley to 48 and two thirds consecutive innings. He has not given up a regular season run there since July 25th. It's the longest home streak in the MLB since Ray Herbert pitched 54 scoreless for the White Sox in 62 and 63. And uh, Wrigley Field often is a pitcher's park but sometimes is a great hitters park and through all of that Arietta has continued to put up zeros. He has just been spectacular. Well, they said the last game that he got beat. Duda gets into one deep to right center field. Bird shading his eyes as he goes and overcomes oh. Davis to bail him out. Hey, you just never know how it's going to go. Marlon Bird lost it in the sun, and Davis, who had lost two earlier, was able to find it. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy, is, that, huh? That's funny. <laughs> He got called off too, and I bet you he was thankful. He was not even near the ball. Different angle right there, you know. You're running away from the sun. I just don't understand why today is such a particularly tough day. For these outfielders to see the ball. I mean, Ooh. You see that happen once in a while. You rarely see it multiple times in the same game. And this is their home field, too. Like, you know, if the Mets were here, you know, they're unfamiliar with progressive field. They haven't been here in a long while, American League, but they play here 81 games. One and two to walk. Well, a lot of times now, the clubs today do not hit. On day games, right. and you got to go out at some point, get some fly balls, and find out where the sun is. It's usually up there. It doesn't go away. Sometimes it hides, but usually during the daytime, it's right up there. A little round ball and a yellow. One, two, three inning for Kluber. Still six nothing.
Stephen Matz and the Mets with a 6 0 lead. Marlon Bird will lead off for the Indians. Matz worked around to lead off double in the fourth. Now he faces the lower third of the Indians' batting order. Bird walked his first time up. And Marlon takes a curveball for a strike. Well, we didn't want to say this prior to the game to give any of you Met fans any high anxiety. But Terry Collins before the game in his office said if Matt doesn't has another outing where he gets knocked out quick it was our bullpens in big trouble. And Matt so far has delivered four sparkling innings. Well there's strike three called to bird as he goes down looking on the fastball five strikeouts now for Matt's. Well this is where Matt Harvey began to falter yesterday. That was. Well, he was perfect through the first four innings, and then all of a sudden he had trouble in the fifth. And Dan Worth had made some comments after the game about Matt's mechanics out of the stretch right. and how when he was pitching out of the windup, everything was fine, but once the base runners started coming, all of a sudden everything broke down. Well, what I saw yesterday from Matt. And I don't know anything about mechanics. And I texted Ron and Ron and asked Ron's opinion, and you saw Ron's opinion. And he agreed with Dan Worth and collapsing his backside. Ronnie's certainly more in tune to those fundamentals of pitching than myself. But rushing, uh, rushing the ball, muscling up instead of being relaxed, that's all part of pressing. Then I think he just got tired. I really do think he got tired in the sixth inning. Well that's uh, we'll talk to Ronnie about this tomorrow when he joins us in Philadelphia. But you know Ronnie believes that, and you know I, I think it makes a lot of sense that the Mets in a bid to try to protect their pitchers after their heavy workloads last year may not have given them quite enough work in spring training. As Walker throws out Uribe for the second half. Let's hear what Dan Worthen had to say about Harvey and his struggles yesterday. It's been out of the stretch, and that's been our, our biggest issue right now. He collapses the backside and ends up muscling the baseball. You know, out of the windup, he's been very good all year. Uh, so right now we're we're struggling with a, a little mechanical issue with him out of the stretch, and hopefully we can get out of that pretty quickly. Is there, and then it's not there. Is there, and it's not there. But that's the same with the velocity right now. Where you know, I've seen Matt. I see his good velocity. I saw it early in spring. I thought you know he was going to have a big year. I still think he's going to have a big big year. I think right now, you know, if we've ever seen Matt Harvey press, this might be the time. When he said it's there and it's not there, he was talking about Matt's slider, which has been a, a real work in progress. It's been inconsistent, and uh, you know, he had a good overhead overhead curveball today, in, uh, yesterday, excuse me, and he didn't use it, and he was basically a two pitch pitcher throwing. I, I mean, I've never saw him throw like 75 percent fastballs, and we had the gun on him at. Around 91, 95. I just saw Terry Kennedy scouting for the Cubs in the press room. Former Cardinal teammate, catcher for the Padres and the Cardinals. He's scouting, and he said he had Harvey at 96. 96, is plenty. But the inconsistency is what's been what's been happening with Matt. Two on walk to Jose Ramirez. Second walk given up by Stephen Matz. So that's what bullpen sessions are for the sides are for and that's why the most important coach on a coaching staff outside of the manager is the pitching coach. Well, uh, Matt Harvey's next start will probably be Friday night in Atlanta when the Mets open that series. That's a good fastball by Matt's throwing it by Rajay Davis. Davis had a bunt base hit in the third inning he's one for two. So if his start is Friday, his bullpen session will probably be Tuesday. And the Mets are in Philly. By the way, the Mets are facing the same three pitchers in Philadelphia that they faced at City Field when they played the Phillies. We get uh, Jared Eikhoff tomorrow night. Vince Velasquez, who's been unbelievable through his first two starts, Tuesday, and Jeremy Hellickson Wednesday. Mats makes quick work of Rajay Davis. Strikeout number six for Mats. We're through five with the Mets up six nothing.
Open their series at Citizens Bank Park against the Phillies with Noah Syndergaard on the mound. Our coverage begins at 6 o'clock tomorrow night right here on SNY. Corey Kluber has settled in nicely in the last three innings, but Mets scored six runs in the first two innings, and that has stood up with Stephen Matz pitching a gem. Most Juan Uribe throws out Wilmer Flores, one pitch and one out of the sixth. There's your city probables for the series in Philadelphia. Syndergaard Verrett making his second start. First one was very good. And Cologne going for the Mets the next three nights. Kluber's retired 11 of the last 12, and now he'll face Alejandro Diazza, who's fly down and struck out. Met six runs, eight hits. The Indians, no runs, three hits. That's got three in the first before the crowd could even settle in. Michael Conforto, an RBI double. Lucas Duda, a two run single. And then the Sun bedeviled the Indians in the second, and the Mets scored three more. The Aza off to a three for 17 start. All three hits came in the first game of this series. This is the last DH game the Mets are going to play for a long time. Good. When do they play the Yankees? It's not until August. Their next DH game will be August 3rd. Detroit? Well, they play two in Yankee Stadium and then three in Detroit, so five straight games. In the American League parks, but it's it's wild that they've played five of them already, the two in Kansas City and now the three here. So that means Joanna Cespedes will be back in the outfield tomorrow. Terry Collins said before the game, Cespedes could have played the outfield today, despite the bruise on his leg. A laced line drive right at Ramirez, so Diaz hit it hard, but he's retired for the second out. Let's check in with the studio. Game break with Doug Williams. That's off to a nine and one start, the best in the history of the franchise, going all the way back to the Expos days. Here's Ploiecki who had the last Mets base hit, a single to left. In the fourth, and Kluber dusts him off. Lecky hit a bolt off the fence in left field, hit it so hard that he had no choice but to stop it first. And he hits another ball hard up the middle for a base hit. So Kevin Pulecki with two very hard hit balls is two for two. Nice to see here off a very tough pitcher who's kind of in a groove. Fastball away. Almost got his foot. So Lucky, who had that game winning hit in the last game of the homestand, a two hit game today. And now Granderson, who's walked and hit that sun aided triple back in the second. One for two, he scored two runs. Pitches on the afternoon, and the Indians have their bullpen working. They had the bullpen up in the second inning today with Kluber struggling early, but he's gotten them to the sixth. Interesting how they got the big paw shift on Granderson, which I understand that, but with two outs, we saw Cabrera put a drag bunt down. But look at Uribe playing real in on the cut of the grass. Playing him there against Granderson until two strikes, and then they'll move Uribe back into the shortstop. Right, because two strikes, you're not going to bunt. Mm -hmm. Although I can't imagine Curtis would bunt with two out and a runner at first. Right. It was different with Cabrera, the right. runner at third, and he was able to bring a run in. That's my point. Is this why is he in? I just move back with the pitch. Grounded into the shift, and Kipnis has got it. Throws out Granderson to end the inning. So Kluber makes his way through six innings, but the Mets and Steven Matz with a 6 nothing lead.
New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Geico over 75 years of savings and service. By Cadillac, visit TristateCadillac.com for exceptional offers. And by City, proud partner of the New York Mets. Steven Matz, five scoreless innings under his belt. Eric Campbell warming him up and a little bit of a whiff. <laughs> That's why he's merely an emergency catcher. Jason Kipnis takes a curveball up in as we start the bottom of the sixth. Fortunately for the Mets, if they need an emergency catcher, they've got a guy who at least has caught professionally in Neil Walker, who started out his minor league career as a catcher. Three brace straight breaking balls to the left hand hitting Kipnis. And he gets him. Change up from Matz to strike out Kipnis, his seventh strikeout of the day. Guys, talking about Darno, it definitely will be a couple of days. He was really, really sore after the game yesterday. When we were meeting with him after the game, he actually couldn't even button his shirt with both hands because he couldn't move that left arm, bend it in forward. So, probably going to be a little while here. Well, Terry said he'd almost certainly not play tomorrow in Philadelphia. We'll see after that. That's throwing a lot of first pitch curveballs now, second and turn, third time through the batting. And order. he's throwing the slow curve gear, and he's, he's slowing his motion down a little bit. Snap that curve off. Lindor drives another one, but this one right at Walker for the second out. So Lindor, who drilled a double to right center his last time up, this time lines one right to Neil Walker. Let's look at today's Verizon trivia question. Three men played at least 200 games for the Indians and the Mets. I know one Hall of Famer. 3,000 yeah. hits he got right yeah. here. And another guy who played the same position also. I got to think on that one. Switch hitter. Another switch hitter. Here's Mike Napoli. They're both switch hitters. Right. Both are. Both. One probably one of the greatest switch hitters of all time. That's a rubless first man up in the Mets bullpen. Matt's at 80 pitches. Hard to believe he'll go past 90 today after throwing just 59 in his first start. A little fly ball to shallow right, and Granderson has it lined up. Nice. And that retires the side. One, two, three inning for Stephen Matz. Only his second one, two, three inning of the day. He's got six scoreless under his belt and a six run lead.
He's been in the infield with luminaries like Ron Washington. But at least this year, Jacoby gets to throw the ball to a bona fide pro named Keith Hernandez. His leadership on the field is, was evident when he was with the, the Mets. So, you know, he can get us going and get us fired up. That's going to rub off to everybody and, you know, get us all fired up. That, my friends, is today's timeless moment brought oh. to you by Coors Banquet. The best. I have to say, you looked awfully good in the uniform. The best laid plans of mice and none. Oh, boy, I was finished there. I tore my calf. Look at this. I was finished. Look how I thought I could play. Look how trim you were. Yeah. Hank Peters called me and said I wasn't in shape after the season was over. I wanted to strangle him. Um, on to another topic, please. Look who's, oh, Ross Detweiler. Perfect. Great segue out of there. <laughs> Detweiler makes his second appearance in the series. Gave up a home run to Neil Walker on Friday night. Faces Cabrera leading off in the seventh. Well, you remember I had the I broke the kneecap at 89 the year prior coming to Cleveland and with against the Dodgers breaking up a double play. And I missed eight. Dave, I, missed, I missed 10 weeks. Dave Anderson. Dave 100 all 165 pounds of him. And um, he was fine. I break my kneecap my patella. And I never was able to come. Missed 10 weeks, and I never was able to. Came back in August when it was hot, and I was just exhausted. I just I was 36, and they didn't re-sign me. I came over here, and I got to believe it was my right patella that I came here and I tore immediately my left calf. I think I was probably favoring the knee and overloading the other side, and that calf never healed. Never healed. I came back after three weeks. The second game in Oakland, I hit a fly ball. No, I was on first base. One of the few times I got on base in an Indian uniform. And it was two outs. I was rounding second base, just going three quarters. And it toured halfway to third. Again, six weeks. And I came back and toured again, and that was it. I said, you know, I went to John McNamara. I said, John, you had all those young players coming up. Baerger was there, Sandy Alomar Jr. Uh, all the young kids, uh, Albert Bell, who I got along with great. I liked Albert. And um, I just told John, I said, you need to play uh, the young kids. I, I can't play anymore. And I forget who the Jeff, who was the first baseman that backed me up? Jeff, he wound up being your hitting coach uh, in Cleveland. I'm talking to the guys. No. Jeff something. I can't, I might have the name wrong. But anyway. Manto? Manto. Yeah. It was a pretty good hitter. And I said, play Manta. Let he's a young kid. Let him hit. You know, I I'm done. You know what they used to call Jeff Manto? What? Mickey. Because Mickey Manto. Oh. <laughs> Cabrera down on strikes for the first out of the seventh. Well, I just I go back to the video we just showed, and I'm thinking, how disappointed Brooks Jacoby must Brooks Jacoby must have been not to be able to play with you. On a regular Jacoby was one of the was one of the good guys in that team. There's a lot of good guys. Um, Lagares well, batting for Conforto. He's going to come in for defense anyway. And with a left-hander in the game, he'll take the at bat after Conforto had himself a terrific day at the plate. Now, normally I would say let let Conforto hit here, but Lagares has had such little playing time. Uh, and he faced virtually no left-handed pitching. So. And Conforto's had three really terrific at bats today. But anyway. We had uh, Corey Snyder in right field. Great arm. Uh, gosh, I'm just I'm losing. I, I had it all. Bud Black was our one on our starting staff. Candiotti, the knuckleballer. Is this 91 you're talking about? 90. 90. So it was the up and coming of the team that was going to be in the World Series in a few years. A lot of young talent. 77 and 85 that year. Well, we didn't lose 90. They had 110 at bats. El Stinkowski. 130. 130 at bats, you hit an even 200. Oh, the, I got to hit the last at bat to, to get, to get me off the interstate. Oh, gee. That's, wow, that's rough. I stunk it up. Let's see, you had uh, Jerry Brown. The yes, Jerry's a good player. 
Felix Fermin playing shortstop. Yes. Candy Maldonado. Yes, Ron, Candy. Ronnie's least favorite player. Candy and Maldonado had a, no hitters. Candy played left field, had a very good year that yeah. year. Hit uh, 273, 22 Who played runs. center? Mitch Webster was in center. Yeah, I like switch hitter. Chris James was on that team. Yes, Chris had a good year too. So, you know, Dan Olin was there in the bullpen. Um, Get Carlos Baerga at age 21 had 300 at bats. Yes, it was yeah. a, it was the up and coming team, and I think that's probably why they they took a chance with me is with the young talent coming up. They knew what they had here. So, Greg Swindell. Yes, he was in the lefty big Tex. And John Farrell. Yes, John Farrell, another great guy. It was a good group. I just couldn't play anymore. I was done. Don't feel sorry for me here. No crying in baseball. But you can if you want. Is the answer to the Verizon <laughs> trivia question. The three all switch hitters, right? Murray, Alomar, Baiga. Yeah. You were talking about Murray. Murray. I was talking about Alomar. Yes, yeah, so Murray's a freaking to mine. Both Hall of Famer. Yeah. Lagaris down on strikes. So back to back strikeouts for Detwilder to start the seventh. Check out SNY.TV for up to the minute news from the Rangers and the Islanders as they continue their playoff runs on SNY.TV, your online home of all things New York sports. Here is Cespedes, one for three on the day, a sun aided double to drive in a run. Detweiler looking a lot sharper than he was on Friday night. Gets ahead 0 and 1. <clears throat> Wayne is Cespedes now in his fifth big league season. Made his debut with Oakland back in 2012. Surprisingly well traveled. Four teams. Metzer's fourth team. Got his first hit off Felix Hernandez, who uh, scuffled yesterday, but got another win at Yankee Stadium, where he always seems to win. What's his record now? Got to, you know, top of your head? I don't. But his ERA is in the low ones. Yeah. Well, he's good. But he walked six batters in five innings yesterday and only gave up one run. Hmm. Oh, jeez. Goose that a little bit. Two and two to Cespedes. It's like Hank Greenwald's basketball call. 20 foot jumper goes 15. Mm. Whatever happens, Hank? Is he still alive? He's retired, yeah. Yeah, he was a good guy. I liked him. Announcer for the Giants. Giants, and, and yep. Briefly for the Yankees. Well, when I was a kid growing up, Gare, uh, NBA was in its heyday in the 60s with Jerry West, Elgin Baylor. Um, that guy Rogers Wilt was the cha Chamberlain was the center for the Warriors, and I, I loved basketball and watching. Hank, and Hank Greenwald was the the voice, the TV voice of the Warriors. And Bill King did, was the radio. The radio. Yep. Another great announcer. That was back in the days when the Warriors played in San Francisco at the old Civic Center. Downtown, which is now the uh, convention center well, area, the they, Moscone Center. They were the San Francisco Warriors. Yes, and they are going to be pro hopefully that again. Uh, they are building that arena right next to, uh, was it still AT&T Park? The Giants Park? Yeah. yeah. They're building it just at the pier south. They're building it. It's going to be a beautiful complex. Warriors have much of a team these days? Hmm? <laughs> Cespedes drops two out walk. I heard they, they might be having a good year, the Warriors. Oh, you think? <laughs> yeah, Steph Curry got hurt. Yeah, he hurt his ankle yesterday. He'll be all right. May not play Monday. Here's Duda, who had a two-run single in the first inning that made it a 3 nothing game. Since then, he struck and out and flied out, one for three. <clears throat> Cespedes at first with two out. Lucas takes a strike. 
So what do we think? Is Matt's going to get another inning? 82 pitches. Yes, of course. Run him out there. That bullpen needs a needs to get his, catch his breath. It's like Wiley Coyote out there. Yeah, I don't know. I I'm thinking they might be extra cautious. Not in, I'm tired of the extra caution with the pitchers. Through with it. One and one to do that. It's one weekly down to first. Napoli blocks it and makes the play for the third out. A walk and one left. It's almost tip time at the uh, arena across the way for the Cavs. Beautiful Sunday afternoon in Cleveland. Lots of kids in the ballpark. A lot of hanging around, signing autographs. And things have gone quite swimmingly for the Mets on a Sunday afternoon in Cleveland. The mustard won the race. Oh, yeah? Beat out the onion? Yep. That scored three in the first, three in the second. Steven Matz has done the rest. Matz in his second start of the year has erased all memory of the first one. And the Met fans in attendance here in Cleveland, and there have been many of them. Have loved every minute of it. And it has been a godsend sent to the bullpen. This performance right here by Matz. People's United Bank brings you today's starters. Matz with six scoreless innings. Corey Kluber gave up three in the first, three in the second, settled in from there, but too little too late, despite his eight strikeouts. And Matz will be allowed to pitch into the seventh inning. Good. Stretch him out. That's what spring training's for. Alejandro de Aza moves from center field to left field. Not April. Juan Lagares stays in to play center after pinch hitting for Conforto. And Matz remains on the hill. 82 pitches deep in his afternoon. Carlos Santana leads off. He's grounded out to first base in both his trips. There's a very interesting note here, Gear, only because it brings into light the great uh, fielding. First baseman from the Philadelphia Athletics back in the 50s, Ferris Fane, who my father always talked about a little bit when I was a kid. Uh, big fancy Dan, tremendous glove, two time batting champion. But Bobby Avila is the last guy to Cleveland Indian to win a batting title, and that was in 1954. Which is also the year that the Indians won 111 games. Right. Only to get swept in the World Series by the Giants. And the only other team that have a longer drought of a batting champion is 
present day Oakland Athletics, which were the Philadelphia A's, the Kansas City Athletics. And of course, they went to Oakland. And Ferris Fane won in 1952, the last one, at 344. There's the good curveball by Matz for his eighth strikeout as he gets Santana. That matches a career high now for Matz. Well, so nice to see Steven get that first start behind him. And it's nice to see he's a youngster. It's his first full season to see him be able to throw it. Put it in his rearview mirror. You don't know how a pitcher is going to react to a shelling, and that was a shelling. And, you know, pitchers are going to get shelled. That was his first experience. Yes, it was his first major league loss, and boy, oh boy, he he went all out on it. I mean, it, it's hard to remember this when you think about his performances in the postseason last year, but this is only his eighth major league start in the regular season. Eight. Gomes lifts one to shallow right. Granderson looking through the sunglasses and puts it away. Two out. So Matt's rolling right along. He's retired six in a row and 11 of the last 12. You know, the pride of Ward Melville High School looking his best today. It's hard to believe with all the only two other pitchers in Met history on their opening. Season start didn't get out of the second inning. It'll be Mike Torres in 84. I witnessed that in Cincinnati, where Mike went one and a third and gave up six runs there. And Jim McAndrew in 69 went one plus and gave up three runs against the Expos. He got better. Andrew was a valuable piece as a spot starter yeah. for the Mets in 69. And 84 was the year that Mike Torres hit uh, Dickey Thon in Houston. Remember? That was the end of Dickey Thon's. I mean, Dickey Thon was never the player he was. Right. Well, he was headed for superstardom yes. before that. Yes. Yes. The shortstop for the Astros back then. I remember he, he, that. He played another decade after that, but he was never the same. Never. And such a great kid. What a nice man. One and two to Marlon Bird. Curveball bounces two and two. And Bird goes down swinging on the slider, and that retires the side. A career high nine strikeouts for Steven Matz. Big afternoon for Matz and the Mets. They're up six nothing. Cadillac Braves trying for their third straight win lead in Miami Charlie Morton working on the shutout for the Phillies as they try to cool off the hot Nats who've won seven in a row and the Angels 
puttering along at five and six out quickly in Minnesota. Here's your Mets box score. Mets actually have six runs today, not the four that it says at the bottom. We get a double Cespedes there. Did you notice that? No, I didn't. Can we bring that up, guys, before you correct it? <laughs> that was a Conforto, not Cespedes, in the three hole. Well, so. Stephen Matz <laughs> getting uh, some unleavened bread in his honor. No, Stephen is not <laughs> Jewish. But it's a nice sign anyway. Seven scoreless innings today for Stephen. What a bounce back after a very difficult first start of the year. Outstanding. Could not have been better today. Career high nine strikeouts in seven innings. We presume he is done. Neil Walker leads off against Jabba Chamberlain in the eighth inning. Jabba making his second appearance in this series. We're two thirds of an inning Friday night. So since Friday night, when I brought it up, have you been able to see the video of Jabba Chamberlain and the midges? Yes, I did. Terrible. Now, Stephen Matz came into this game with an ERA of 37.80. Gary, where is it now? Uh, I think I had him at 7.27, so he's dropped more than 30 points off his ERA. Good for him. It happens early in the season. I don't think I've ever seen a 37.80. <laughs> well, didn't we? Um, when the Phillies were in, didn't Daniel Stumpf come in with an infinity ERA? Okay, but infinity is better because it's there's no numbers to quantify. Yeah, well, Stumpf was able to lower his ERA below infinity, but then he got suspended for 80 games because he got caught using uh -oh. steroids. So, no, so I didn't. We, I missed that uh, one. Yeah, we won't be seeing him in Philly tomorrow. Uh. Walker's 0 for 3 today, and Jabba misses low 3 and 2. Wilmer Flores on deck, then Alejandro de Aza in the eighth. Met six runs, nine hits. The Indians, no runs and three hits. And Walker breaks his bat and floats one. Oh. And a nice play by Kipnis, making the shoestring catch for the first out. Been a long way for this ball. It's all about getting to it. Nice play. There's very little Kipnis has done wrong in this series. It's a good-looking player. So one out and nobody on now. Wilmer Flores, who's 0 for 3, getting the start at third base today with David Wright getting the full day off. The reason that David's day off was today. Is because Terry Collins wants to make sure David can play all three games in Philadelphia, where David has, has hit a, a history of crushing the ball. Yeah, he has had great success there. And Wilmer gets one on the air to left. Just missed it. Ramirez to the warning track to reel it in. That's the second out. Let's check in with the studio. Doug Williams has a game break brought to you by the New York State Department of Health. All right, Doug, here's Alejandro De Aza with two out and nobody on. De Aza's gone over three today, hit the ball very hard his last time up, lining out to left field. Now facing Jabba Chamberlain. Corey Kluber went six innings, was charged with six runs and nine hits, one walk, eight strikeouts. So, unless the Indians have a big rally in him, in them, uh, Kluber, like Matt Harvey, will begin his season 0 and 3. Terry Blevins, Hansel Robles up in the Mets bullpen. With Stephen Matz presumably done after seven scoreless innings. You got Matz pitching a gem today. You've got Syndergaard, who has been the fastest out of the gate. Among the Mets starters going tomorrow night. And you hope, if you're a Met fan, that 
those starting pitchers will start to get into that kind of rhythm which is what was expected from this team. There was a lot of uh, inclement weather ice cold six off days the Mets have in April. Well they should have good weather in Philly. They have to play through a few raindrops but it'll be warm in Atlanta and then they go home to play the Reds and the Giants start in the next homestand. Atlanta's got believes going to get in the 80s. Here. Yep. Well it's Atlanta. It's the South. It's supposed to be. It's Atlanta Jake. <laughs> well I just I, I'm. I'm, I'll be very happy if we can just get you out of Cleveland intact. Oh, I'm fine. I'm just saying. The history here is that the armored car down in the, uh, the the bullpen area behind behind the right field fence is where the players' garage is. You need the armor? No. <laughs> Kipnis throws out Deaza. One, two, three inning for job and Chamberlain, which sends us to the bottom of the eighth with the Mets up six nothing. Brickashaw Ferguson on why he decided to retire and the plans he has for life after football. Plus, could the Jets franchise quarterback be in this year's draft class on Jets Nation tonight at 7, only on SNY? Hansel Robles will be the first man out of the bullpen today for the Mets. And the Mets bullpen really getting a helping hand here from Stephen Matt's seven strong shutout innings. They needed this. Catch their breath. Robles pitched in the first game of this series, won a third of an inning in relief of Bastardo in that 6 5 Met win. There's the winner of today's race. Congratulations, Buster. I knew you had it in you. Well, you, you just can't overstate what Stephen Matz's performance means for the Mets. Oh, no fooling. And really, too, coming off a a, a, a shelling, really, of, of Harvey, too, and the young Mats being able to, after coming off a bad start himself, following Matt's bad start, it shows a lot of inner strength. Juan Uribe leads off, gets a first pitch slider, and skies it on the left side of the infield. Juan Flores secures it with two hands, one away. Those are all buddies, Sandy Alomar Jr., former Mets coach and player. Former teammate. I love the, uh, the catching demonstrations he did a few years ago when he was with the Mets with, uh, with Kevin. He took his trade behind the plate very seriously. So 
Capitol say Ramirez taking a strike and you know Sandy is he's a big man and catching is a little more complicated when you have that kind of big frame. We had Joel Skinner was the backup catcher and Sandy Alomar. Joel Skinner was the son of Bob Skinner the old Pittsburgh Pirate. And of course Sandy Alomar Jr. the son of Sandy Alomar Sr. And on three pitches Robles disposes of Ramirez and quickly there are two out. That was that Cleveland team in 1990. And they were both tall slender catchers. Sandy Jr. member of the Indians Hall of Fame. He, that lineup that the Indians had in the mid 90s was so good Sandy used to bat ninth and he was a tremendous hitter in his own right. There's Rajay Davis. I mean think about what they had Jim Tomey Carlos Baerga in his prime and Omar Vizquel and Albert Bell and Kenny Lofton and Manny Ramirez and yep. Sandy Alomar I mean just there was no soft spot in that entire lineup and they didn't win the World Series the Marlins beat them. Our lighter was on that team correct. When they won that year in uh, when they beat when they was he on the team when they beat the Indians. They had a good pitching staff. Yeah they had uh, and now they had Alex uh, Fernandez. Yes. Kevin Kevin Brown was. Yeah. They team. had a good they had a good good starting rotation. In 97. Of course the uh, they also lost to the, the Braves in 95. The Indians. When, um, when Tom Glavin shut them out. That's the only title the Braves won during that great stretch of division titles. Dominating inning for Hansel Robles. One two three with a couple of strikeouts. And we roll on into the ninth. That's looking for the series victory. to the post game on Mets Insider from Kansas City to City Field for the home opener get a behind the scenes look at the start of the Mets 2016 season on Mets Insider presented by W.B. Mason today after the post game only on SNY Tyler Naquin about seven innings too late takes over in center field for Rajay Davis and Dan O'Tara the veteran former Oakland A comes in in relief his second appearance in this series and Mr. Powecki is up and has a two for three going make your day. 
put a three for four up there. And both the hits were bolts. He hit a shot off the left field fence in the fourth inning and then a bullet up the middle that almost clipped Corey Kluber in the sixth. Indians have gotten two scoreless innings out of their bullpen, but all the damage in this game was done in the first two innings. Mets put up three against Kluber in the first, and then the Sun and Rajay Davis's inability to negotiate it conspired to give the Mets three runs in the second. Two fly balls that Davis could not catch, a triple for Granderson with two out, and then later in the inning, a double for Cespedes. But the Mets taking full advantage. And with uh, Steven Matz brilliant today, it's been an easy afternoon. Down to first and off the glove of Napoli, and he can't run it down in time. And Ploiecki is safe. And ball had some spin on it, but Napoli unable to secure it, and he'll get charged with an error. Yes, sir. Did not get in front. Second error of the day for the Indians, who had been charged with another one that was taken away. Not sure that was appropriate, but here is Granderson with the runner at first. Curtis says a triple and a walk today. He scored two runs. Mets will head to Philadelphia after the game today. Should be a nice quick flight. Have a nice dinner at a normal hour with the rest of the folks. And it should be a warm day in Philadelphia tomorrow. And a nice evening to watch Noah Syndergaard pitch against the Phillies. I'll be heading home to Haji. He'll be very happy to have me for four days. And I'll and Haji, my cat, of course. And Gary, I'll pick you up Friday in Atlanta. We'll look forward to your safe arrival. Now are you arriving on the off day Thursday or are you coming in on Friday. I'm sorry. Are you arriving on the off day Thursday. Thursday I got to get Friday? in a dinner hour. <laughs> so we've now covered the dinner hour tonight and the dinner hour on Thursday. Yes. Napoli makes a perfect throw to Lindor the relay too late. So Napoli after committing the air makes a nice play to get the three six force for the first down. Well, actually, it was a rebate covering at second, so it's a 3 5 fielder's choice. It's still a hard thing to get used to. It is. Oh, for in your rebase case, the guy was a shortstop earlier in his career, so didn't feel out of place there. That's a few pounds ago. Here's Cabrera. As Drubal is two for four today, and a very important and heady play in the second inning with Granderson at third and two out in the infield playing back. He laid down a perfect bunt hit to drive in a run and make it a four nothing game at the time. It's this one out to left field. Ramirez back onto the warning track to make the catch. Well, Cabrera. Given a run a ride the other way for the second out. And now Juan Lagares will come up for the second time. Well, Lagares getting two at bats. That's a good thing. He's been kind of dying on the vine on the bench here a little bit uh, with lack of left handers against the Mets so far this year. So this is good that he gets two at bats. Mets have faced only one lefty starter so far this season, and they won't see any in the next series in Philadelphia. Garris had just 10 at bats this season. Juan struck out as a pinch hitter in the seventh inning, taking the spot of Conforto, who had two doubles and two RBIs today. And the only time he was retired was on a deep fly ball near the wall and left. One year old Dan Otero. That's the sinker in for a strike, and it's one and two. 
Otero first pitched to the big leagues with the Giants briefly in 2012 spent most of his career on the other side of the bay in Oakland. Three years there before coming to Cleveland. And a slow ground ball Lindor waits for it. And that retires the side. Three more outs to get for the Mets bullpen as they look for the rubber game here in Cleveland. Tonight on SNY, we'll have all the baseball and the hockey, and the Jets crew will be talking about DeBrickenshaw Ferguson and his decision to walk away. All on Geico Sports Night tonight at 10:30, only on SNY. We go to the last of the ninth. Nets have been on top from the outset, and Jerry Blevins will try and put on the finishing touches. Well, Blevins this year so far has made it through April. Last year did not, as you recall. Make it through April, the line drive off the forearm. And this is his first appearance in this series. So he's one of the few well rested. Levin's last work Wednesday went two thirds of an inning against Miami, a lot of run on a hit. Bases Jason Kipnis has been held in check today, two strikeouts and a double play ball against the lefty Stephen Matz, and now he faces another lefty in Blevins. Mets were able to put up early offense, but the story of this game is the performance of Stephen Matz in his eighth career regular season start. Seven scoreless innings, nine strikeouts, a career high, and a complete reversal from his first start of the year. Good curveball by Blevins to strike out Kipnis, who fans for the third time today. That's 12 strikeouts for Mets pitchers. One down in the ninth. There's your curve. You see the tumbling ball there. And you see the break. That's a nice camera angle, is it not? The follow through by Blevins. Very that's a great angle. Love that. Now Francisco Lindor, who's hit two balls hard today, a double to right center and a scolding line drive that Walker caught. Twelve strikeouts for Met pitching today. Nine by Matt through seven. Robles was dominant in the eighth, striking out a pair. And now Blevins ahead on Lindoro in two. The Nats and Phillies are one-one in the bottom of the seventh. The Phillies are home today, so they'll stay home to play the Mets tomorrow night. Oh, 
two from Blevins. And the curveball strikes him out. Flewecki can't find it, though, and Lindor arrives safely at first. So it's a strikeout for Blevins and a wild pitch, enabling Lindor to reach. Curveball. Just late with the glove, not good footwork at all by Plowecki. Well, you got a right hand hitter coming up in Mike Napoli, and Terry Collins is on its way out to the mound. He's got Addison Reed up in the bullpen, and it appears Reed is going to come in and try and get the final two outs. So Blevins exits after notching back to back strikeouts on six pitches. Six nothing Mets in the ninth. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Verizon. We'll be right back to Cleveland. I want that job. The bottom of the ninth, one of the prime reasons why Steven Matz. Well, what a performance. Seven innings strong, and boy, did the Mets need this in more ways than one. To win a series starting on the road trip here in the American League in Cleveland, and also the bullpen, which has been tuckered out, overused. And nine strikeout performance, three hit, no runs. And there's the new pitcher to hopefully finish off this game. Addison Reed give up a home run in game one. What game in this series? Friday night. Friday night. That's the first game. You're right. Against Carlos Santana, who's standing on deck. Mike Napoli at the plate, 0 for 3 today. And Reed throws one by him, and it's 0 and 2. That pitcher is now with 13 strikeouts. Levins threw six pitches, got two strikeouts, but. On the second one, Francisco Lindor reaching on the wild pitch. So there have been eight pitches thrown in this inning, eight strikes. Napoli makes contact but fouls it off. Matt struck out nine in his seven innings. Robles struck out two in the eighth inning. Robles did something that's very hard to do. He had a seven pitch inning with two strikeouts. Struck him out. So the K's just keep on coming. Slider. Now I know pitchers have had four strikeout innings. Has a team ever had two pitchers combine for a four strikeout inning? That's what they'll have a chance to do here. So people are going to look at the box score tomorrow and go, how did Levins get two strikeouts in one third of an inning? It's a conundrum. Here's strike one to Carlos Santana with the Indians down to their final out of the afternoon. 
That's bidding for their second shutout victory of this young season. Santana dribbles one up the line and that kicks foul. And now the Indians down to their final strike. Who wants it? It's going to toss it away anyway. The two men pitchers who've had four strike innings are Derek Wallace and Mike Stanton. They're the only two to do it. Okay. I don't think they've ever had a combined four strike out in it. Reed's got a chance for that ahead on Santana 0 and 2. He struck him out and the ball game is over. 15 strikeouts for Matt pitching today capped by a four strikeout ninth inning. And the Mets take the rubber game of this series behind strong work from Steven Matz as they beat the Indians 6 nothing. Well very very strong performance for Matz. He's the star of the game coming off a horrible first start. Uh, the, to start his season where he got didn't get out of the second inning S uh, seven strong innings three hits nine strikeouts the hitting stars top of the order did all the damage Granderson scored twice Cabrera scores twice Conforto scores twice RBIs from the top four hitters in the lineup actually five Duda actually got him two out RBI so all good 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 a nice series for the Mets on the road to start out this nine game road trip and Fordo leading the attack with two doubles and two RBIs and Steven Matz did the rest Met pitcher struck out 15 Matz had the first nine and the Mets win it six to nothing for every Mets win the Mets organization is proud to contribute twenty five hundred dollars to Northwell Health and the Katz Institute for Women's Health. For more information, visit NorthwellHealth.com slash KIWH. This win brings the total contribution so far this season to $12,500. Mets win it handily on a Sunday afternoon in Cleveland. 6-0 the final. More from Progressive Field is coming right up.